Hello everyone, and welcome to a super quick video on getting some simple fireflies into your Unreal Engine 4.26 project using the Niagara Particle system. By the end of this video, you should be able to create something that looks like this. There's still some shaders compiling, so in the meantime, to add a little bit of context, I am using a slightly modified version of the third-person character. So I created my own instance of the third-person character um, so that I can play around with this blueprint and not have to worry about breaking other projects or other scenes. I then um, referenced my new character in the third-person game mode uh, which will look like this. So the default spawn class is now my modified character, not the original character, so that when I click play, I now have my modified third person character to run around the scene um, and control whatever movement I need to. That's not super important right now, but it will come into play a little bit later. So just front loading that context right now. Without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to be using a uh, the new particle effects system in Unreal called Niagara. So I'm going to create a folder somewhere in my project called effects, go into that folder, and this will be where all of my particles and particle systems live. To create a Niagara particle system, we'll right click and go to effects, F effects, which is short for effects. Ha, you see what they did there? Uh, and we have all these Niagara options. Basically, what we're going to do is create an emitter, which will emit our particles, and then connect that emitter to a system. So a system can have multiple emitters and multiple triggers and, and all that type of stuff. But for this, we're only going to be using one emitter and one system. Uh, so create a new emitter, and I'm going to choose from a template, meaning that we have all these different uh, starting points for us to draw from. In your own time, I suggest exploring all of these templates the one that we are going to use for our fireflies is called hanging particles or hanging particulates, which is generally used for sort of dust or particles that float around in your scene and don't have too much movement to them. All right, that will create a new emitter, which I'm going to call PE fireflies for particle emitter fireflies. Now that we've got this, we can click into this emitter and see what that looks like. We have a relatively new interface with our particle emission stack over here. So this is the order of operations uh, that calculations on our particle system uh, will apply. And then on the left hand side, we have a preview of what our particle emitter will look like. And on the right hand side, we have um, a, an expanded view of our particle stack. I don't want to get too much into particles right now. This is going to be a quick video, just a how to. So um, that's all we really need to know for now. Hopping back into our scene, we've got our fireflies and they look okay, uh, but we can't drag them into our scene and we can't drag them into our hierarchy. And that's because our emitter needs a system. So the emitter itself is not good enough. We need to have a system which controls all the emitters in that system. To create a system from this, we'll right click and um, up at the top of this menu, say create Niagara system. That will create a system based on this emitter which I'm going to rename to Particle System Fireflies. Your naming convention is obviously up to you and your project. If I double click into the system, it looks very similar to our emitter, but we now have this extra blue uh, system controller. So you can modify the emitter either from the Particle System window or the Particle Emitter window. Uh, I'm going to close the system because all I really need to do is follow the particle emitter. All right, now that we've created our system, we can drag the system into our scene and position that system somewhere and we'll have our particles floating around the scene. Hurrah, that's amazing. This is already a great start, but I want to tweak some of the settings to create a larger area that the fireflies are being emitted in, as well as change the timing uh, of the, I want to sort of relatively quick fade in hang around for a second and then fade out. Let's open up that emission window, the Firefly emitter, and have a look at some of these settings. 
without even going into too much detail on all of the aspects of this node, we can start clicking through and see that there are some useful things for us to play around with, such as the spawn rate, uh, the initial particle settings where we can adjust the color and size, and then the box and sphere location inside which the particles are created. So the first thing that I'm going to do is change the size of the box in which the particles are created. Right now, the default seems to have both a box and a sphere. I'm not entirely clear on why that is, possibly to create a sort of rounded rectangle, um, but I'm only going to use the box. So I'll right click onto the uh, sphere location and hit delete. So now our particles are spawning inside a box, which is four meters wide, four meters deep, and one meter tall. So if I wanted to change that to something like 20 meters wide, 20 meters deep, and two meters high, um, I've already got a much less dense particle emission, um, which happens to be a lot wider and taller. All right, so the next thing that I want to tackle is the fade, the speed of the fade. Um, or actually, before I do that, let's apply, pop back into our scene, and you can see that the particles already cover a much larger area, which is great. The next thing that I want to tackle is the speed. I feel like there are too many particles in the system at once, and they remain on the screen for too long. So going back into our emission settings, we can change the number that appear per time, per unit of time uh, in the spawn rate under emitter update. So I'm going to half that to about 25 and see what that does for us. And the next thing that I'm going to do is change the duration that each particle exists for. So under the initialize particle tab, we can change the lifetime of the particle. Right now, the lifetime of each particle is a random number between five and eight seconds. I'm going to change that to something between two and five or so. A cursory Google search leads me to believe that this is a reasonable estimate for a typical glow of a firefly. If I was trying to be super accurate, I might do a little bit more research on that. All right, let's apply that and see what this looks like. So we've got a little bit less dense fireflies and they appear on screen for a little bit less of a duration, which is great. The particles themselves are fading in a little bit too quickly for me. I want a slow fade in and then a slow fade out. So let's pop back into the emitter window and uh, adjust that. There are a few different ways that you can adjust this sort of thing. You could fade the particle in, uh, you, could fade the, you could fade the color of the particle over time, but the way that the default hanging particles does it is fading scale over time. So if we click the scale sprite size, which will scale this size over its lifetime, the curve on the right hand side of the screen has a relatively quick fade in and then stabilizes for most of the duration of the particle and then a sort of slow fade out. So I'm going to click on the first keyframe and drag it further towards the middle of the graph and then also add a slower fade out, just using these keyframes to manipulate the curve as I want it. And once I hit, once I finish that, hit save, go back. And this is a lot more gentle of a curve. All right, things are looking good. Now I want to adjust the color of each particle. Right now it's a sort of default standard white. I want to add a little bit more of a yellowish green glow and also increase the brightness. Fortunately, that is something that we can do in the Initialize Particle tab under Color. We could also, if we wanted to, change the color over time. Right now, there's a bit of a there's a slow fade in on the alpha channel and then a slow fade out. Uh, you can play around with that curve as well if you wanted to add a little bit of brightness variation over the lifetime of the particle. However, in Initialize Particle under Color Mode, we have the option to add color. Let's add a little bit of a greenish yellow tint and increase the value above one to add extra brightness to this particle. I'm going to say something like 10, see what 10 does for me. Hit OK, hit Apply, pop back in, and now each particle has a little bit more of a glow about it. 
I might increase that saturation just a tad. That works pretty well. The last thing that I'm going to do is um, the particles up close are very obviously just circles. We could go in and change this by giving the sprite a, a little bit more of a texture, but for now all I'm going to do is turn down the starting size of the particle uh, between 1 and 2, and hopefully that should hide the fact that it is just a circle on the screen. Depending on how you have your bloom settings set up, you might need to tweak the brightness a little bit more or reduce it, uh, but this is good enough for me. So if you have an area in your scene where you need fireflies and your fireflies don't follow the player or anything like that, this is all that you need to do. You can drag around the system and depending on where you place the system, that will be the center of where those fireflies start. And then depending on how big or small you need the area to be, uh, you change the box location of the particle emitter. However, in my case, I want the fireflies to seem persistent across the scene. So no matter where the player goes, there should be fireflies. One thing that I could do is create a massive particle emitter and just cover the entire scene, but that's quite inefficient and would probably be quite heavy on your CPU. So instead, what I'm going to do is go back to my third person character the one that I created and modified, and add this particle system to the character themselves. So once I search for Niagara, if I search for particles, Niagara particle system comes up, which I will call fire flies. Now that I have the particle system component, I can go to the details panel and under Niagara, there's an option for me to choose which system to use. I will click the drop down menu and search for the firefly system that I just created hit compile, and in this blueprint viewport, you can see that my fireflies are already starting to show up. I'm going to drag the particle system up a little bit so that they start at about head height. And once I've done that, I can go back into my scene, delete the particle system that's currently in the scene, delete, and Right now, no particles, but when I hit play and my character joins the scene, suddenly the particles all start emerging. Ooh, my motion blur is a little intense on those fireflies, but that's for another day. Depending on how fast your character runs, you might need to change the size of your box emitter so that you don't ever overtake the boundaries of your particle system. Uh, but it seems like this is working out pretty well for my character, where no matter how fast or far I run, the fireflies are still generally around. Okay, that's it from me. I hope this has helped. Enjoy adding fireflies to your projects, and take care.